Everything you're seeing on the screen at the moment was created in RStudio using Quarto, right? And you can create these sorts of HTML outputs, lovely dashboards like this that are interactive, and even PDFs that have lovely references. So before we talk about the details of YAML, I want you to know that there are three places where it appears, and it's quite important to understand how these relate to each other. The first and the most obvious is at the top of your Quarto document, there will always automatically be some YAML code and that will define how it is that the entire document is rendered. Sometimes you might want to include some YAML in a code chunk itself. And if you put, so here, this is YAML, right, that I've got right here. If you put YAML into a code chunk, it will take precedence over the YAML that's at the top of your document. And the third place where you could find YAML is if you've created a Quarto project. Now, what does that mean? Sometimes you're not just creating one document, but you might want to create a series of documents and you want them all to have similar formatting, et cetera, et cetera. Then you create a Quarto project. The good thing about creating projects is that R will automatically set your working directory and everything works much more cleanly. I always recommend working in projects, so I'll quickly show you how to do that. So instead of just creating a Quarto file, you would go to new project, new directory, Quarto project, and then you'd create a new project right there. And when you create a Quarto project, R produces this little file over here called Quarto.yml. And that's basically a YAML file that'll have YAML that'll apply to all of the Quarto documents that you create in that project. So there's this hierarchy. There's a YAML file that we're looking at at the moment that will apply to all of your Quarto documents. Inside your project, you may have a particular Quarto document that into which you can apply YAML that will overwrite or take precedence over your YAML file and will apply to just this document. And then within the document, you may have chunks that have YAML code that overwrite both of the above. So let's take a little bit of a look at how YAML instructions fit together, right? Let's look at this nested structure that you can have at the bottom over here. You could just say format colon and then a space HTML and it'll format that document as HTML. But you may have more details underneath HTML that you want to also specify. In which case you go to the next line and you go two spaces to the right. This is how the nested structure work. And you say HTML colon because you've got more to say. You go down a line and you go another two spaces to the right. And here we've got TOC which means that there's going to be a table of content and you're saying that that's true. So yes, we want a table of content and you want numbered sections true and you can keep going. So your HTML formatting can be as there's millions of things you can do. Well, here you go. Here's all of the HTML formatting. It's not even all of them, but these are the ones that are possibly more 